you, but you can't. Not till you've seen me. Betty! Why the reception, sir? <laughs> They're loony, but I love them. What do you think of England, Bobby? Well, I haven't seen very much of it yet. Is this your first visit? Yep. You chose the most extraordinary day for it. Oh? How come? It's raining. <laughs> Who is it? Peter A. What for Anthony Eden? It's Bobby Denver, the crying crooner. You started something and said goodbye. You started something when you made me cry. It may be over, but you can't deny you started something when you said oh. goodbye. Well, here we go. A little present for you. Oh, thank you, sir. Why? Saves are being torn off. <laughs> Will you telephone this number, sir? The shoreline's over there. Thanks very much. <laughs> Hello, would you get me Wimbledon 38775, please? That's right, thank you. Hello? Uh, hello, is this Wimbledon 38775? Yes. Now, this is Bobby Denver. This is Mr. J. Arthur Rank's secretary. Mr. Rank would like to see you as soon as possible. The address is... The Cedars, 38 Acacia Avenue, Wimbledon. Could you perhaps come out tomorrow? Okay, honey. Thank you so much. Good morning. All right, see you later. Bye. He's coming here. Bobby Denver's coming here. And I'll have him all to myself. Thank goodness, Corrin's in Texas and Pat's in Paris. I love to spend my evenings there as I watch each loving pair in that quiet little rendezvous where contentment fills the air. L'amour toujours, they gently sigh through the night. The wine Say something, idiot. Comment. It lacks soul. It lacks what? It has panache, it has form, but it has no soul, old boy. None! Lancia! What did you call me? You have the artistic mentality of the stag at bay.
mean, oh, 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 oh. So you are Mrs. Marx, yes? Mrs. Marx? The prisoner, he gave his name as Karl Marx. Address the Kremlin. Occupation spy. He did? Well, he was teasing. He's a very brilliant artist. Oh, 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 oh. I wish you'd stop saying oh, 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 oh. You have seen the painting, mademoiselle? Of course. It is meant to be what? Me. Oh, 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 oh. Gendarme. Sergeant. Inspector. We're English. He's been fined 500,000 francs. And English people in Paris don't have 500,000 francs. Now, if you just let me phone my father, he'll fix the whole thing. But it is against regulations, mademoiselle. You can reverse the charges. But, mademoiselle... Please, will you? Very well, mademoiselle. You're a jolly gentlemanly gendarme. Uh, Inspector, uh, you wouldn't mind putting the call through for me, would you? I knew you wouldn't. Hello. Que se passe-t-il? Nothing today, thank you. The name is Bentley. John Bentley. Psst, Marx is. Yes. It's all right, darling. I phoned Mummy. She said Daddy will fix everything. Including a 500,000 francs fine? Of course, he's a dear. Well, he must be. Only, I'll have to go and get the money out of him myself. And Mummy thinks it's a good idea if we stay with them for a bit. In Acacia Avenue, Wimbledon. I'd rather stay here. <laughs> to get a carbuncle, why there? You can't pick and choose carbuncles, honey. Well, this has certainly brought things to a head. Oh, I sure hope so. You save and save for a trip back home to England. Don't tell Mommy and Daddy a thing about it. Keep it as a wonderful surprise. And now this. You really think I'll be a surprise to your folks, honey? I'm positive. I, I told them you work with horses. They think you're a vet. A horse doctor. We spent every cent of our money on the passage home. And now, just because of Barnaby's barnacle, we're out of a job. How are we going to get from here to New York? I don't know, honey. The only thing I do know is I ain't right. <coughs> okay, Flash. It wasn't your fault. Well, this is the last thing I wanted to do, but it'll have to be done. What's that, honey? Cable Daddy for money. Would be an expensive address. Knocks us back five dollars before we've even started. What does, honey? The Cedars, 38 Acacia Avenue, Wimbledon, England. Morning, Stella. Morning, Linda. Eat your prunes, dear. Shut up, you. Well, now, what have we here, hmm? Octopus. I beg your pardon? John, dear, every morning for the past 18 years, since I left the stage to become the second Mrs. John Bentley, you have lifted up the lid of that dish and said, well, now, what do we hear, hmm? Every morning for the past 18 years, it has either been egg, sausage, or on comparatively rare occasions, haddock. I should have thought the element of surprise would have worn off by now. Hello, who's that ghastly character? He's not a ghastly character. It's Bobby Denver. Is that the fellow who bashed in his grandmother's brains with a meat axe? Oh! Anything wrong, dear? Mm, no, 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 nothing wrong. <laughs> it's only Corin and that cowboy husband of hers. Has he fallen from his horse? On the contrary, he can't get on his horse. He has a boil. Boil where? Dallas, Texas. He's out of a job, and will I send them $500? $500! But you see, that's, uh, oh, well, that's roughly 190 pounds at the current rate of exchange. They've got to be married two months. Is this to go on their entire married life? No, of course not. Dad. Oh, I'm not so sure. Man's obviously toxic, liable to get car bunkers on his, uh, where he has this one every other month. Oh, no, dear, I remember reading. They never strike in the same place twice. As a... You know, I knew it was a mistake, Colin, marrying that fella. Well, thank heavens, Patricia's got us up a nice, steady, reliable... John, dear, I rather wanted to oh, talk to her. Gosh, her. is that the time? You know, why all the clocks in this house have to be at sixes and sevens at eight in the morning, I have no idea. <coughs> Sorry, Oscar. Really, I should have thought that by this time it was a well-established fact that I leave this house every morning at 8.30. I know, dear. In order to catch the bus which passes the corner of Acacia Avenue at 8.34. Yes, dear. Connecting with the train to town, leaving Wimbledon Station at 8.48. Yes, dear. What time will you be back? 6.57. Good morning. Quite over. Well. Oh, Mr. Bentley. Good morning. Bentley, you know I'm not one to complain, but it's the overflow from your system. Oh, no, what's the matter with it? I think it's the ball cock. I suspect that it needs adjusting. Well, I, I haven't seen to, certainly. 
Oh, that's very kind of you, Mr. Bentley. It really is most annoying. It goes gurgle, gurgle, gurgle all night long. Well, how would you expect it to go? Ten TV, ten TV, ten TV. Good morning. I love the morning. I love the morning. Hey! Hey! Hey, wait a minute! Bentley, your boy, is I have never in my life seen such a wonderful tea. Oh, pardon me. Would you care to take my seat? <laughs> Yes, kindly stop dithering. Mr. If you have anything Mrs. to say, Bentley please telephone. just say. It's you know, we have an extremely busy day ahead of us. Yes, I have a great deal to do before the market opens. So if you wish to consult me about anything of a personal nature, kindly do so later. Something's happened to your daughter. Well, I can't be made responsible for everything. Oh, who? Well, well, oh, when? Mrs. Bentley telephoned. Oh. Will you return at once? Well, why didn't you say so at once instead of living? Look, you better phone Mrs. Bentley at once. No, I'm leaving the office right away, and I expect to catch the bus arriving at the corner of Acacia Avenue at 10.21. Now, don't forget. Oh, What's the matter with Gwen? Nothing serious, is it? Oh, it isn't Gwen, dear. It's Pat. Pat? Why? Is she ill? No, dear. Left her husband? No, dear. Is she unhappy? No, dear. Does she want anything? Yes, dear. How much? 500 pounds. Oh. After all, John, dear, it might have been so much worse. She might have married the man who knocked her about. Oh, I see. So I'm supposed to regard my daughter's marriage as highly successful merely because she hasn't got a black eye. <laughs> Good heavens, have you been shipwrecked? Oh, John, dear, that's not a very nice welcome. But why is she dressed like a morbid fisherman? Because Peter, her husband, is an existentialist, dear. They have a flat on the Boulevard Saint-Germain. And on the Boulevard Saint-Germain, all existentialists dress like morbid fishermen. Well, really, I thought everybody knew that. Oh, how do you know? Uh, Pat just told me. John, dear, aren't you going to kiss your daughter? Hmm? Put that down at once. Now then, how did you get that black eye? A French aristocrat hit her with a bottle. Oh, well, I'm happy to know she's meeting some nice people. Now look here, if this ghastly husband of yours is in financial difficulty, why couldn't he have had the guts to come and ask me for that money himself? He couldn't get away, dear. Oh, nonsense. He could have telephoned. At the moment, he doesn't happen to be on the telephone. Well, all right. He could have written and sent a telegram in honor. <laughs> he obviously prefers to be gallivanting about in Paris. He isn't gallivanting about in Paris. He's in prison. What? John, dear, do take things calmly. We don't want you to have a stroke. This is no time to discuss my blood pressure. I thought you told me Pat's husband was an established playwright. He is, dear. It's just that he hasn't been established long enough. He's 50 years ahead of his time. But not, I gather, with the rent. I might have known. You don't like Peter. You don't appreciate his hidden talent. Well, I'm a stockbroker, not a Geiger counter. You couldn't appreciate him any more than you could appreciate a, a symphony by P Picasso, or a painting by Puccini, or anything that hasn't anything to do with your money-grabbing old stock exchange. I suppose you think it's ridiculous that Peter doesn't paint his pictures for money. Not at all. As long as I keep my health and strength, why should he? I'll never forgive you for that. As long as I live. Never. 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 Darling. Ah, pleasant little interlude. <laughs> Quite like old times, wasn't it? Oh, have a whiskey. No, thanks. Uh, uh, yes, please. Who could have believed it possible? My two daughters married to penniless husbands whom I've never even met. Well, you know perfectly well, Corinne was too scared to bring Barnaby here. And Pat had to signal from the window to Peter to let him know whether you were in or out. Can you wonder they slipped away to get married? Oh, I see. All my fault. Eh? The father's always to blame. Give the children money, you spoil them. Give them no money, you handicap them. 
Expect much from them, you set too high a standard, expect nothing, and you give them an inferiority complex. There is no answer. Of course there is, dear, as long as they're happy. Nonsense, any monkey with a bomb tied to his tail could be happy, <laughs> until it goes off. Oh, well, anyway, thank goodness Gwen's only 16. There's no immediate danger of any man coming into her life. <laughs> Sure, this is the right address. Number 38, sir. Maybe this is Bobby Denver! <laughs> Bobby Denver! What? Bobby Denver! Oh. Bobby Denver! 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 It must be Bobby Denver. Has everyone gone stark, staring, raving mad this morning? <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Rank, I was a second lieutenant in the pay corps. What's that got to do with it? Better put these in water. My calcellaria multiflora. Never mind about your health, it's your garden I'm worrying about. It's in a terrible condition. Now look here, Mr. Rank. I am not Rank. Honestly? My name is Bentley, John Bentley. I'm a stockbroker in the city. Who are you? Bobby. Bobby, darling. Would you hold these for a minute, please? Yes. <laughs> Hello. Do you know this person? Of course. Everybody does. He's the most wonderful man in the world. He tugs at the heartstrings. He's been tugging at my calcellaria. Look at them. What do you think you're doing? Get out of it. Go away. Shoot, shoot, shoot. You're going to be awfully angry with me. Why? I, I pretended to be J. Arthur Rank's secretary. Just to hear you speaking, really. I never thought you'd come. What? You realize I'm in love with you? Gwendolyn, go to your bedroom. If your mother heard you. Bobby, darling. Hello. Are you Mr. Rank's secretary's mother? <laughs> A little present for you. Flowers. Oh, and so fresh. Mr. Denver. I feel there has been some extraordinary mistake. I'm extremely sorry. Good morning. Oh, my darling! Oh, oh, oh. Hello, gorgeous. Mr. Bentley, do you know what he called me? Gorgeous. Linda? Linda? Oh, gosh. If you're going to make a habit of this, you'll have to start slimming. You can't go on like this, Linda. Come on, snap out of it. You're all right there. Yeah, you look lovely. Come on. Down. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I lost my braces. Stella! Don't be silly, dear. He had all his buttons torn off. Not sewing so much for him. I'm trading the needle. <laughs> oh, uh, from one of my fans. Mr. Denver, apparently you have some extraordinary effect over women. For all my wife cares, I can go around minus all my buttons for months. My youngest daughter appears to be so infatuated by you that... Uh... It's not infatuation. I'm in love with him. Don't be ridiculous. He's nearly as old as I am. You're only 16. Juliet was only 14 when she fell in love with Romeo. They were foreigners. What's that? My microphone. I always carry it around in case anyone asks me to sing. Oh, nobody's going to ask you to sing in this house, huh? Oh, John, I'd love him too. Oh, Bobby, please do. Well, if you insist. Would you mind plugging this in, please? Huh? Oh, very well. Oh, no, no. That's fine. <laughs> Shows that it's working. Oh, uh, would you mind saying a few words into this, please? No, I will. <laughs> Thing, I don't know whether to laugh or cry. I fell in love with you the first time I heard you sing that. 
I've been in love with you ever since. Gwendolyn? I don't know whether to laugh or to cry over you. I don't know whether I ought to be joyful or blue. To my heart I say, this is your lucky day. Be happy, relax, you are free. It's time that you awoke, t'was all a funny joke. But I guess the joke is on me. Oh, you were just acting, and now you are taking your bow. Comedy, tragedy, what shall we call it now? It's driving me crazy, what shall I do? Everything's hazy, I wish I knew. I don't know whether to laugh or to cry. One of my stepdaughters. Just come back from Paris. They're doing the dress shows, I see. I have not been doing the dress shows. I'm an existentialist. Oh, well, you can't be. Pretty kid like you. Well, you can't even pronounce it. Did you call me pretty? Why, oh, sure. Hasn't your boyfriend ever told you you're pretty? I haven't got a boyfriend. Mm, that's bad. Got a husband. That's worse. He's in jail. That's better. Never mind her. She's happily married. Bobby, darling, you cried real tears. Oh, I do love you so. Gwendolyn, upstairs. You can't talk to me like that. I'm not a child any longer. To your bedroom. You better do as the old man says. What was that you called me? You do as you're told, and I'll fix your seats for my first night at the Hippodrome. Seats for the whole family. Thank you. I used to be one of a family rather like this. They were a bit screwy, too. Oh, but nice. They never got over my becoming a crooner. My parents almost died of the shock. The rest of the family emigrated to Australia. You'll come, won't you, for my first night? Well, I'd love to. Oh, Bobby, darling. Gwendolyn, if you don't go to your room this instant, I shall put you across my knee and give you the soundest thrashing you've ever had in your life. How dare you? You've insulted me in front of him. I'll never forgive you for that. Never. 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 Has everybody gone mad? This degenerate product of so-called modern civilization, this perishing weeper, barges into my house, wails his unadulterated muck into a microphone, and what happens? The maid faints all over the linoleum. My youngest daughter says she's in love with this nitwit, and news tell her go around goggle-eyed. Denver, I shall thank you to remove this bauble and get out of my house. <laughs> Have you a car, Mr. Denver? Sure. Would you give me a lift? Where to? Anywhere. Anywhere? Yes. Anywhere. The last 18 years, John, I've put up with your drab, dreary, dull, dismal daily routine. In the short time that Mr. Denver's been in this house, I've had more excitement and glamour than in all those 18 years. It's made me feel as if I were back on the stage again. And you dare to call him a degenerate product. I'm sorry to have to say this, John, but I would willingly leave you tomorrow for either Abbott or Costello. Come along, Bobby. That was her. Bobby. Goodbye, darling. So long. <laughs> Come on, let's run for it. You can clear away, Linda. Oh, all right, I'll clear you away. Uh. <laughs> what the? 
I told you, it's the ball cock. You should have it seen to. Oh, Mr. Bentley, you know I'm not one to complain, but while Bobby Denver was singing, Mr. Wags was extremely sick on my drawing room carpet. <laughs> That's the Wagsy boy. <laughs> Thank heaven someone's retained the sanity. <laughs> Hello, Father. Nothing today, thank you. I'm Peter. Oh, no. You're not Pat's husband. I've been taking some frightful liberties, but I'm not. Good to see you, Dad. So this is Mon Repose. I witnessed the Aspidistra. Suburbia, here I come. Ed, where's my woman? Your what? My little one, my loved one, my Rose of Sharon, my wife. Never mind about your wife. Why aren't you in jail? I escaped. I always said the French police were inefficient. Ah, memories, memories. You know, I used to wait for you to get a bed, then creep in here and do my court. Same old spring. Take your feet off that couch. Tumba, I dislike you intensely. Were it not for the fact that it... <laughs> Put out that filthy pipe. If you please, Mr. Bentley, sir. Blender, go away. I am about to commit murder. Miss Wayne's just committed suicide. What? She locked herself in the bathroom, sir, and left this note. Oh, my baby. What have I done? Come on, you. Oh, my baby. What have I done? Whatever it was, I said I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Oh, oh look, she's foaming. Well, oh, get a doctor. A doctor, yes. Let's see her. Peppermint. Who are you? Your brother-in-law. Golly. Are you all right? Yes, of course. I only did it to scare him because he's been so beastly. I swallowed a whole tube of Mummy's toothpaste. It lathers better than mine. Well, I must remember that. How did you take it? On the chin. <laughs> Yes, yes, it's my doctor daughter. Uh, my daughter doctor. She's in a terrible state. Mr. Bentley. Out. I beg your pardon. Get out. Well, I think you ought to know. I'm not one to complain, but your daughter's horse is nibbling my mountain ash. My daughter's what? Your daughter's horse. That's <laughs> <laughs> the girl. Oh, bury me not on the long prairie. Where the coyotes howl and the wind blows free. The narrow grave just saves my free. Daddy! Daddy, darling, how wonderful to see you. How are you? You look yes. marvelous. Yes. We didn't tell you we were coming. We wanted to surprise you. No. How's Mommy? Oh, well. How's Gwen? <laughs> How's Mr. Wags? Well. Oh, Barnaby, this is Daddy. Yeah! <laughs> Mr. Bentley, relax. You have been through a very serious emotional disturbance. You are telling me. Now, the way I see it, all this trouble comes from this Bobby Denver. The moment he arrives in your house, what happens? Your wife is threatening to leave you, your existentialist daughter ignores her existentialist husband, and your youngest daughter is all the time committing Ausgeschlossenblatt. Ausgeschlossenblatt? Attempted suicide. Oh, I see. And the maid is all the time fainting on the linoleum. Well, what about Flash? Flash? Yes, it's yes, yes, the horse. Up to now, I've discovered no psychological disorders connecting the horse with the corona. Well, I'm certainly happy to know that. They are curious pathological phenomena, these crooners. Cardboard lovers for disappointed wives. My wife is not disappointed. How do you know? Emotional outlets for frustrated adolescents. But Gwendolyn is not frustrated. But can you be sure? Face the facts, Mr. Bentley. You like this Bobby Denver? Denver? Oh, I can't stand the sound of him. Exactly. You make natural enemies. He makes the people cry with his sad songs. You make them laugh with your funny jokes from the stock exchange. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind about that. Look, what are we going to do? First, we must study Mr. Denver very carefully. When a canker gets into the system, it has to be diagnosed before it can be cured. Yes, yes, yes. Come. So where are we going? Mr. Denver is holding a press reception at the Savoy Hotel. We also shall be there. All right, but how do we get in? Mr. Bentley, I'm a psychologist. Come. Well, I was born in Arkansas, on a small farm. Hold it a minute, Bobby. 
Thank you. Just a farm boy. How old are you, Mr. Denver? How old are you? Are you making any recordings here? Yes, a few. Good. Is that an American suit? Yes, it is. I haven't caught up with your English tailors yet. <laughs> is this your first visit to England, Mr. Denver? It sure is. And boy, I certainly am tickled pink to be here. Will you be here long? Well, I do a season at your wonderful Hippodrome Theatre, and I sure consider it a mighty big honor to be playing there. Then I do some telecasts and one or two broadcasts, and one or two provincial dates. I want to see something of your wonderful country. You know, Stratford, Manchester, Scotland, towns like that. <laughs> and something of your wonderful English family life. I've only been here a couple of days, but I've been made to feel so at home by a typical English family that I, well, I feel as if I'm just one of them. Feels he's one of us. He is one of us. You're not married, are you, Mr. Denver? Uh, no, I'm not, but I sure would like to be if the right girl just happened along. <laughs> just one more picture, Mr. Denver. Uh, say, fellas, I think I've done just about enough talking, so if you don't mind, I'd rather see. George? There's a light that lies in Liza's eyes and lies and Interesting. lies and lies and lies in Liza's eyes. And he who tries to analyze the light that lies in Liza's eyes will find to his surprise they're just two fakers, heartbreakers, playing their game with skill. They promise a crazy thrill that her lips and arms will never fulfill. But still I love the light that He has got something. He has a sort of revulsion. Those little white lies, they only lie to the other guys. No, thanks. I've had all the ham I can take. Come on. One thing is obvious. This Bobby Denver must spend as much time as possible in your house. In my house? Now, look, I refuse... I'm so sorry. Uh, same again, please. There is an English saying, familiarity broods attempt. When your youngest daughter sees Denver as an ordinary, dull, uninteresting, humdrum person like yourself... Thank you. When she sees him in the early mornings, unshaven, with his plate out, she will forget all this foolishness. Yes, yes, sir. wait a minute. What do you mean, early mornings? I suggest that Bobby Denver spends all his time in your house. What? Now, look, I've told you before, I refuse it. I'm so sorry. Same again, please. Your wife will come to her senses again. Patricia goes back to her husband, even the maid. She is standing upright again. <laughs> There is something else I must tell you. Ah, uh, and what is that? It is also necessary that I myself spend all my time in your house. No, positively, it's quite all right, thank you. Yeah? Mr. Bentley, I have a very good idea. You have a good idea, eh? Now, wait a minute, let me tell you once and for all, I refuse it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, say it again, please. My son is, um, what you call it, inventor. Inventor? All right, go on. He has invented a new kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you mean, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute, what's new about it? It's silent. Instead of all the sloshings, it makes the little noise like someone crying. Crying? Mr. Bentley, someone crying. Oh, you mean? Yes. <laughs> we patent it. We call it the Bobby Denver. How can the ladies still go crazy for Denver when they see his name every time they go into yeah, it? All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 Schneider, my boy. It's a wonderful idea. Too bad we ain't got none of that tartan paint, honey. She looks mighty pretty. What's tartan, Barnacle? One of them new color schemes. It's funny. What? You being called Pat. Well, what's funny about it? I don't know. It just doesn't seem to go with those pants. Now, listen, crybaby. You've caused enough trouble in this family. Why don't you dry your eyes and go home? What a pity. Well, what's the pity? I know so many girls in America just like you. Not existentialists or whatever you call them. Just girls who seem determined to make the worst of a good job. Oh, you could be so charming. Look so wonderful. No one as pretty as you should dress that way. Oh, shut up and let's go in. What's the matter? Don't you think I want to behave naturally? Don't you think I want to look like a woman? I'm sick of my way of living. I'm sick of the Boulevard Saint-Germain and the existentialists and the whole shooting match. And I'm sick of these clothes. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. You fiend. You wicked thing. All right. Two can play at that game. Go on. Your move. <laughs> 
You know, you need a darn good spanking. And you too. Now, come on, you two, your sister. Let me go. Let me go. You're going to kiss go. and be good Let friends. Let me go. Let me go. Kiss and be good friends. Let me go. Come on now. One little go. kiss won't hurt you. What was that you said? Denver, I'll get you six years for this. Now, perhaps you'll realize the damnable influence these men have upon women. I suppose I ought to feel flattered that you came home the other day with your hat on. May I have a word? Not from me. Throw you in the gutter where you belong. Daddy, if you touch him, I'll... Oh, John, don't be ridiculous. Bob is a perfectly ordinary, respectable person. And I like him. I love him. He's made me realize what a fool I've been. I'm grateful to him. I see. Well, seems I'm the only one here with any sense of decency. I feel a little in the way. Excuse me. What do you think he'll do? Lock himself in the bathroom and swallow some toothpaste. How did you know about that? Your mother told me. Oh, she did, did she? Well, he can't, because Mr. Snyder's been in the bathroom all day. somewhere. Daddy! I don't seem to fit into the scheme of things any longer, but don't worry. I shall make all the necessary arrangements. Oh. I shall... Tell her there's nothing sacred to you. Do you realize I may never see you again? Is there anything particularly funny about that? No, dear. It... It's just that your pajamas are hanging out. I see. My tragedy has been robbed of dignity. Goodbye. Daddy, you can't leave us. This is your home. I have no home. I never thought you'd desert your family. I have no family. Goodbye. You started something when you said goodbye. <laughs> you started something when you made me cry. <laughs> Now it's becoming the talk of the town. People are saying that you turned me down. Stella! Oh, Stella, darling. Bobby. <laughs> Listen, can we take it back about three bars before I start to cry, please? What bar's that? Well, how would I know? What do you think I am, a musician? I won't answer, then. Oh, very funny. You should be up here. <laughs> All right, Bob. I don't know whether to laugh or to cry over you. Now, a great beginning. Da, 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 da. That's it. That's wonderful. Thanks very much, fellas. All I right, appreciate all the work you have. See you later. Wrap it up, boys. Please knock. Okay. Come in. What are you doing here? Fixing Val Parnell's plumbing? Please, Mr. Denver, I have an idea. I can cure Miss Gwendolyn's inflammation. <laughs> Infatuation for you. You know David Garrick, the actor? Sure. Well, he used to repel. He used to repel. He used to... Uh, I get the idea. He used to repel unwelcome admirers by pretending to be drunk. Mr. Denver, I am suggesting that you do a David Garrick tonight. Now watch this, honey. By the time I get through, I'll be able to knock the flies off the back wall of the theater. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> Pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> yeah, hold on now. That's it. Now, this is it. Linda, stop fooling and come and get the supper. Come on, out. <laughs> How's that, honey? Pretty good, huh? Are we an orphan, you, Daddy? 
Not at all, dear. Only this is Wimbledon, you know, not Dead Man's Gulch. I mean staying here. Of course not. But do you know what they call this house now? The Ever Open Door. We'll go as soon as Barnaby gets a job. What was he thinking of doing? Studying law? But you do like him, Daddy, don't you? He's a dear, a dear. How's his carbuncle? I think there's another one on the way. Well, there's something to be said for new faces. Poor Daddy. I suppose as a family we are a bit of a headache. Ah, oh, that's all right, darling. As long as you're happy. No, Pop. As long as we're happy. Hi, Pop. Oh, hello, darling. Are we being a terrible nuisance? Now, what on earth's given everybody the idea of you being a nuisance? We'll go the minute Peter gets a job. Oh, is he looking for a job, too? Yes. Then we can be near you always. <laughs> yeah, that'll be wonderful, dear, won't it? Do you really love him? Of course. Extraordinary. Underneath, he's very sweet. Underneath what, dear? All that fungus? <laughs> you know, he's very disturbing. When he's with me, he drives me crazy. And when he's not with me, he drives me even crazier. Yeah, he just drives me crazy, period. I love you, I love you, I hate you, I hate you, then I love you, I love you again. I need you, adore you, and then I ignore you, then I need you, adore you again. It's just my crazy little mixed-up heart, you see, that keeps confusing me. I'm spellbound, I'm spellbound, and then I am hellbound, then I'm spellbound, I'm spellbound again. We make up, we make up, we break up, we break up, then we make up, we make up again. And then the merry-go-round is wound again And I go round and round again I love you, I hate you, I hate you, I love you That's my crazy little mix-up, never got it fixed up hard And the merry-go-round goes round and round and round and round and round and round Coming. Who? Henry Irving. Um, David Garrick. Come on. 
So there I am, starring at the Palace Theater on Broadway, opening night. All my plans out front. What happens? I forget the words to the song. <laughs> oh, Bobby, darling. Now, go ahead. But I'm in love with you. Think I could have a drink? Of course, darling. What? Whiskey. A large whiskey. Okay. Water or soda, darling? Oh, just make it straight, kid. Thanks. That's your tune we're playing. Our tune. Yeah. And do you realize this is the first time in our whole lives we've been alone together? Yeah. In such a night as this, Troilus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls and sighed his soul. <coughs> May, I have... May I have another, please? Of course, darling. David Garrick, that's my whiskey. Oh, thanks. What was that you were saying? In such a night as this, Troilus, methinks, mounted the Trojan walls and sighed his soul towards the Grecian tents. Would you like a cigarette? I'd rather have another scotch. Oh, good. Aren't you shocked? No. I think it's wonderful to be able to drink as much scotch as that and still sing as divinely as you do. It's like everything about you, my darling. Wonderful. In such a night stood Dido with a willow in her hand upon the milk sea banks. In such a night Medea gathered the enchanted herbs. Oh, Bobby, darling, it's so wonderful. Troilus and Cressida, Aeneas and Dido, you and me. I gotta be going now. I'll, I'll be late for my TV show. Uh, oh, Stella. Come, darling. Say, don't we look beautiful tonight? Oh, where do you think you're going? Bobby's asked me to watch his TV show. I'm going, too. Oh, are you? Hi there, honey. Say, what are you all dolled up for? Bobby's asked me to watch his TV show. Is that so? Women, in this enlightened age, some clock like Denver has simply to waggle his torso in front of a television camera and the whole lot go berserk. Thank heavens that my wife has the simple sense to... Oh. Where do you think you're going? Bobby's asked her to watch his TV show. Oh, are you sure there's room for us all in your car? Sure. Come on, let's get going. Just a minute. What about my supper? Well, Linda will fix you something. I can't, Mrs. Bentley. Mr. Dent has asked me to watch his TV show. Look out, she's going again. Come on. Don't be lonely, darling. I'll be back in time to kiss you goodnight. Goodbye, Daddy. Goodbye, Peter. Bye-bye, Barnacle. Good night, boys. Have a good time. Have a good cry. <laughs> <laughs> you started something when you said goodbye. You started something when you made me cry. Switch it off. Yeah, let's have a drink. I'll have a large scotch. You won't, you know, remember? Oh, no. I'm going down to the pub. I seem to be standing in something wet. Hey, boys. What is it? What about this? Scotch. Wait a minute. The real McCoy? No, Scotch. And I have two feet. Here we are. One, <laughs> one, 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 well, down the itch. A fat lot of use you've been. Can't anything be done to prevent this fellow ruining all our lives, even poor old Peter? <laughs> <laughs> Father, I believe you're coming round to me at last. The appalling comparison between you and Denver almost makes me like you. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, Snyder. Surely something can be done. Have you no ideas? Yes. How would your wife react if one day you bring home a girlfriend? What are you suggesting? That you change your way of living. It is the reaction to your own respectability that has made your family fall for this bohemian crooner. Mm -hmm. So, stop being respectable. What? 
From now on, you will live in such a way that will make the Folly Berger seem like a kindergarten. I refuse. I will have nothing whatsoever. You'll find me at our favorite rendezvous, requesting all those little songs we knew. Oh, that settles it. Schneider, do you know any strange women? Of course. Oh, well, now, look. Tomorrow night after the slipper room dancers get six of them. Oh, what am I saying? Get a round dozen. Have them stand by and we'll think of something. You started something when you said... <laughs> Look out, she's going again. Goodbye. me a car immediately. Charlie! <laughs> you looking for something? Ladies. Beautiful ladies. One dozen round girls. Excuse me, ladies. Would you please don't go away. I just want to ask. Young lady, lend me your ear. Who do you think you are, Marlon Brando? Thank you very much. No, would you and some of your lady friends like to come on a little trip with me? Where to? Buenos Aires? Uh, no, Wimbledon. A party? Bring about 12 beautiful young ladies. Blondes, brunettes, redheads, you know, a, a nice assortment. <laughs> what do you think we are? Licorice all sorts? Okay, we'll see you later. Oh, yippee! Tonight we live it up! Ah, no, don't mind our cookout. Ah, You're getting into the scenery. Oh, come I don't down want to commit to 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 but I'm too young. Look out! Oh, this is me sugar. No, oh, we're trying to get a show on here. This is a theatre, not a circus. Oh, I'm coming down. Oh. <laughs> Fit! Come on, you out! If ever I get you in here again... <laughs> on some time. Mr. Denver follows the meeting. Oh, good. All right, let's go. Right, right. Don't shout. Where's Peter? Hmm? Oh, he's up there with the plutocrats. You're not mine, are you? Oh, no, no. <laughs> Happy to know that. <laughs> Tell me, how did you get in here? Well, I queued up all night for the gallery, and when I got to the door, they were full up. <sniffs> Even standing room. So I went round to the front, and I followed you lot in. And, well, here I am. <laughs> Lucky, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> got a bit of a cold waiting, didn't you? But uh, uh, since you are here, may I ask what is your name? Oh, I'm Frankie Johnny Daniels Lane. Oh. Well, Mr. Lane, perhaps you'd better beat my family, my wife oh, and uh, oh, my daughters. <laughs> yeah, ladies and nice. gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, will you please take your seats? Bobby Denver will be appearing in two minutes. Uh, well, now, Mr. Lane, uh, as a matter of interest, not that you're not welcome, of course, but uh, why did you go to all this trouble to come in here? Oh, well, I I'm Bobby Denver's greatest fan, uh, yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, I I'll let you into a little secret. <laughs> I'm a crooner myself. <laughs> <laughs> Making a good start, aren't you? <laughs> oh, I I've got all his records. Oh, they send me. Yeah, I suppose they sent you here, didn't they? <laughs> Most unfortunate. Uh, well, now, I imagine you come from a theatrical family. Your father was probably a crooner? No, no. No? Your mother? 
No, no, as a matter of fact, I'm the only one with talent. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please take your seats? Bobby Denver will be appearing in one minute. Well, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> yes, I, I'm afraid it is. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the London Hippodrome has great pleasure in presenting, for the first time in England, Bobby Denver. <laughs> sing a little song that I think is one of the most beautiful to come out of Tin Pan Alley in a long, long time. It's called Be My Guest, and I hope you'll like it. Be my 
guess And sweet caresses to capture be my guess And if you want love that will pass the acid test If you know what's best Forget the rest And be Oh, Daddy, I do love him so. Doesn't he make you want to die through sheer ecstasy? Well, die, but not with ecstasy. Read him to Ellen! Bacon Punch! Banana Prize! Oh, dear. He'll get himself in trouble again. I'd better go and get him out. Yes? Mr. Denver would be glad to see you all in his dressing room and would like you to have supper with him after all. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, I'll stand for the dressing room, but I refuse to have supper. Oh, with him. Oh, oh, oh. oh, how this brings it all back. I should never have left the profession. I wonder if he's in my old dressing room. Excuse me. Now, here's our chance. I'll get out of the dressing room as quick as I can. Get the girls out to the house and I'll be right along. Right. 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 You must be chilly this evening, aren't you? I'll be very Excuse me. Hello, darling. I won't be a minute. Oh, thank you. I shall look forward to bother you. <laughs> thank you so much. So sorry to bother you. <laughs> Could you direct me? <laughs> I don't know. Now, now. <laughs> no, no. No, no. No monkey business. <laughs> <laughs> Stop this thing, will you? Stop it! Bring on the heels, dear boy. Remember the Achilles tendon. What will my office boy say? Get me out of here! Oh, come along, girls. Your father's in one of his skittish moods. Get me out of here, Stella! Morning exercises. <laughs> What's that? He's waiting for Denver in the fire. Well, that's perfect. I get rid of the whole lot of them. Hi, Dad. Hurry it up. Don't forget the party back home. Yes, come on. Look at us. Good evening. Mr. Denver's just changing. He won't be a minute. Oh, Hi. Excuse me. Gwen. Bobby, darling, it's no use. What's no use? I can't live without you. Wherever you go, you must take me with you, darling. Now, just a minute, Gwen. Gwen. Mrs. Gwen. Gwen. Go away. Gwen. Let me in. I know I'm a little younger than you, but we can wait a few years, can't we? Oh, what for? Well, to get married, of course. Oh, Bobby, darling, I do love you so much. Bobby. Open this door. Okay, Stella, just a minute. When you were singing tonight, I saw the tears streaming down your face. I've never met anyone like you before. Someone who can't even whisper the words goodbye or I love you without his eyes filling with tears. Real tears. Now, just a minute, Gwen. Now, you promised that when I brought you and the family here tonight, you'd get all this silly nonsense out of your head. It's not nonsense. It's love. You see those? That's what you call fan mail. All from very sweet and very silly little girls just like you. All of them imagining that they're in love with me. It's not imagination. Well, not in my case anyway. I am in love with you. <clears throat> okay. Do you see that? Who is it? My wife. You're married. And now. 
Do you see that? Y you don't mean... Of course I do. Why, I never cried a real tear in my whole life. Watch. I don't know whether to laugh or to cry over you. You're a cheat. Sure I am. Now will you get some sense into that pretty little head of yours, or do I have to shake it in? Don't you dare touch me. Granddaughter. Let me go. I never want to see him again. He's horrible. Darling, don't worry, Mummy. She'll be all right. It's only one of our usual crushes. Hello, is that the Daily Express? Can I speak to the editor, please? I have a sensational revelation to make. Daddy was right. He always is right. <laughs> Poor Daddy. <laughs> Come do the hokey pokey polka. Dance to the hokey pokey polka. She slaps you, you slap her, then you break and slap each other. First you pinch, then you break it, and show her you can really take it. Then if you want to know what coolness is, go on and try it on the missus. At a party or ball, you can have a free fall. So come do the hokey pokey polka. Legitimate? I didn't come here to be insulted. Oh, now, look, I wouldn't insult you. Didn't Schneider explain things to you? Our relationship, my dear, is no more than that of a managing director and his private secretary. Oh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> a night's still young. Why don't we go to the embassy? Oh, yes. Oh, no, thank you, Bobby, darling. It is sweet of you. I've left poor John alone too long. I must get back and fix his hot milk. <laughs> I am now about it. I am now, I am now about to cast pearl before time. An orgy. Denver. What's Bobby Denver got that I haven't got? Two thousand a week. Oh, never mind about that. Hit it, Horace. If your sweetheart sends a letter of goodbye, it's no secret you'll feel better. When waking from a bad dream, don't you sometimes think it's real? But it's only false emotions that you feel. If your heart aches, seem to hang around. Too long And your blues keep Getting bluer With each song Remember Sunshine Can be found Behind A cloudy sky so let your hair down and go on and go If your heart aches seem to hang around too long And your blues keep 
getting bluer with each little star. Remember, folks, remember, sunshine can be found behind a cloudy sky. So let your hair down and go right on. You must get yourself some glasses. Who is she? Well, if you must know, she's a Miss Pearl Delaney. I'm an actress. She lives at flat number seven, Virtue Mansions, Maiden Lane. Well, I think that's about everything. <laughs> Next season, Royal Academy. <laughs> Have you gone mad? Not at all, not at all. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Would you mind very much? Thank you so much. Tell her I'm grateful to you. Grateful? Oh, yes, you were perfectly right. Up to now, I have led a dull, drab, monotonous life. But now I've had a little fling. And what's more, I'm going on having little flings. I find I like little flings. <laughs> what? I don't want to live. Well, what do you propose to do instead? <laughs> that doesn't matter. What does matter is how I do it. And I'm going to do it. Beautifully. That was a line from a play. What play? Edda Gabler, just before she went upstairs and shot herself. <laughs> Stella! 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 Oh, my baby. What have I done? What have I done? Whatever it was I said, I didn't mean it. I really didn't. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's vanilla. <laughs> Brute! No, no, no. no take I'm it. feeling take brute. Take it easy. Take it easy. Now. Wretch! And now the morning star is shining sparkly from afar, but I hate the morning. But I can hear the children play, but later, later in the day, for I hate the morning. The street musician got my mad attitude and no goat. Until I up to Randy's oboe clean on his throat. He had a lengthy repertoire, now he hasn't any more. But I hate the morning. Hey, Bob! Well, what is it? What do you think? Barnaby's got a job! Oh, fine, fine. Six months with the traveling circus. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, fine, fine. He used to do whip cracking, trick shooting. Fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Rope spinning and bareback riding on dear old Flash. When are you leaving? Right now. Fine, fine. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Bye, Daddy, darling. I love you very much. Bye, bye, Daddy. <laughs> oh, bury me not on the lone prairie. <laughs> Good heavens. What's the matter? Don't you approve of me dressing like an ordinary human being? You look wonderful. And I feel rather ridiculous. I'm afraid you've got Bobby to blame for this. You're not in love with him? No, but he has brought me to my senses. I'm never going back to the Boulevard Saint-Germain. I never want to hear the word existentialism again. I just want to live an ordinary, normal life with ordinary, normal people. I'm sorry, Peter, but there it is. Now shall I tell you something? I hate it almost every moment of our life in Paris. I don't really know what the word existentialism means, and I'm frozen to death in these perishing shorts. Oh, Peter. 
Why have you been acting like a crazy lunatic all this time? You seem to forget what you were like when we first met. You were bored by everything. You drank neat whiskey. You swore like a trooper. And it was only with the greatest difficulty I stopped you chewing tobacco. <laughs> yes, well, I was just a phase. Well, I didn't know that. I thought I had to act crazy, too. Otherwise, I'd lose you. And I didn't want to lose you. Darling. Now, wait here. Don't move. I've a surprise for you. I've ruined him. Who? Bobby Denver. Look. Do ask any, Linda. Pat, I never thought it had come to this. Whatever will he think of me? I did it. Can you ever forgive me? Did what? I told the press about the onion. <laughs> Oh, now, now, you're getting yourself all upset. <laughs> That's better. Your breakfast, sir. Oh, thank you, Linda. Where's my mistress? There, your mistress. Mrs. Bentley's gone, sir. Gone? Yes, sir, she packed a few things and left. Oh, uh, did she take her mink coat? No, sir. <laughs> She'll be back. I've ruined him. Who? Bobby. Last night, I thought it was the other way around. You haven't ruined me. Why, you've given me the greatest publicity I've ever had in my whole life. I'm held over for a third week at the Hippodrome, and the film office are just pouring in. Even one this time from J. Arthur himself. There's a life that lies in Liza's eyes, and lies and lies and lies and lies and lies in Liza's eyes. And he who tries to analyze the light that lies in Liza's eyes will find, to his surprise, they're just two fakers, heartbreakers, playing the game with skill. They promise a crazy thrill that her lips and arms will never fulfill. But still I prize the light that lies and lies and lies and lies as eyes. Cause it only lies to the other guys. Peter, what has happened? Darling, you're bald. You look wonderful. I'm going to get a job. Insurance, I thought. I'll give you a lift. Thanks. Well, so long, Gwen. You're a real nice kid, and someday you're going to meet a real nice guy. So no more nonsense. Promise? I promise. I'm afraid I've caused a lot of trouble. On the contrary, I think you've done a lot of good. I sure envy Mr. Bentley. A loving wife, a lovely family, and a quiet, peaceful, well-ordered life. Did you hear that? Ha <laughs> ha, good old RAF threw the sound barrier like a crack. Ha <laughs> ha, wonderful. A flying saucer. What the country needs is more moonlight, more people who sing. I love you, I love you, I do. See Mr. Bentley, Linda? Yes, he's upstairs in his dressing room, Mr. Denver. Oh, thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Bentley. Oh, hello, Bobby. Are you going? Yeah, and I'll bet you're sure glad to get rid of me. Oh, I wouldn't say that. You had me worried for a while, though, but it wasn't your fault. Now, don't forget. Come and see us next time you're in England. Thanks. I'll be glad to. Goodbye. Bye -bye. Uh, oh, wait a minute, Bobby. Uh, I hope you don't mind my asking you this, but uh, is it true you get um, 2,000 a week? Yeah. Pounds? Well, sure. Just for... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hmm. If your sweetheart. <laughs> Goodbye. Bobby. Bobby, please don't leave us. Oh, I'm not leaving you, Linda. I'm just going down to the theater to rehearse for my evening performance. And I've reserved a special box just for you. Bye. Linda! Now, Stella, before you say anything, I can explain. It's all right, darling. I've been to see your girlfriend. My girlfriend? Miss Delaney. Pearl, darling. 
term, you call them both? Certainly. I knocked three times, she let me in at once. We had a cup of tea and she explained that there was nothing to explain, and we parted most amicably. Yes, I'm afraid it's all been my fault. Must have been rather dull for you sometimes, I'm afraid, but I'll try and brighten things up for you from now on, you know. Take you out to lunch sometimes and go to nightclubs, and if you like that, we'll start tonight. Oh, no, we won't, dear. When I looked in the mirror this morning, I thought I looked tired and ugly. I said I thought I looked tired and ugly. I'm not arguing, dear. Oh. <laughs> Hello, who are these for? For you. You've forgotten. It's the 23rd. 23rd? Our anniversary. Oh. The day you first met me, I was in the Bingo Girl. Yes, I remember that. Darling, do you remember that first actress I wore? Of course. Pale pink, yes. covered with sequins. Lovely, dear. Do you remember the round of applause I used to get at the end of my song? I gave it to you, dear. Of course I remember it. You always said it was an occasion for rejoicing. And I quite agree. Well, I meant it. Aren't you going to the office? Gosh, I nearly forgot. Look, I'll just go and collect my things. See you downstairs, darling. <sighs> I don't know whether to laugh or to cry over I don't know whether I ought to be joyful or blue. To my heart I say, this is your lucky day. Be happy, relax, you are free. It's time that you go. It was all a funny joke. But I guess the joke is on me. You were just acting, and now you are taking your bow. Comedy, tragedy, what shall we call it now? I'm feeling hazy, what shall I do? Everything's crazy, including you. I don't know whether to cry <laughs> or to laugh <laughs> over you. Time. Ten twenty-six. Well, that's fine. 
If I leave here now, I can catch the bus which passes the corner of Acacia Avenue at 10.34. Connecting with the train to town, leaving Wimbledon Station at 10.48. What time will you be back? 6.57. Good morning. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. What the... Morning, Mr. Rank. I am not Mr. Rank. But I've got your telegram. What do you mean, telegram? And I've got me music. What? Oh, I'm ever so grateful for this opportunity, because I know I can be a smashing singer. Oh, I'll make them swoon and, oh. and cry oh, and everything. not again. Go on, son, have a go. Don't laugh at me. Don't sing at me, son. I, I know it. it's true, yes, I'm, I'm a fool. Standing. No one seems to care. I'd give the world to share my life <laughs> with someone who really loves me. Norman. Norman, darling. I see that fall falling in love. <laughs> the night like you Today on Turner Classic Movies, an aspiring songwriter gets stuck with an alligator named Daisy. Then guest programmer Dennis Miller has plenty to say about William Wyler's Dodsworth. And Miller finds much to admire in the amazingly quirky The Third Man. Visit the Dennis lineup at TCM.com.